good morning, everybody. I'm so glad that you're all here. I'm glad that you're watching online right now. I'm excited about today for numerous reasons. One, I'm, I'm just going to start out immediately and ask you, who all has honored your commitment that you made last week? And I'll, I'll tell everyone to close your eyes so nobody feels guilty, okay? Close your eyes, and by a show of hands, who all made your, honored your commitment to spend five minutes in God's presence each day this week? You see. All right, you can put your hands down. Those of you that, that did it, and you can open your eyes as well. Those of you that did it, let, let me know just, just by a shout or an amen or something. Let me know. Did it make a difference? <laughs> amen. And so anyone that didn't do it, guys, you just heard from them. You, amens and woots, and you heard from them. Spend that time, five minutes every day in his presence, and you will begin finding rest for your restless souls. I want you all to do that, and, and I, I felt it was important to remind you of that commitment this week because it's so vital to our lives. Now, before we start really digging into picking up on the soul detox that we're all starting to do, I, I want to take a moment really quick as well because not everyone got to make it out last night, but uh, Pastor Tony was ordained last night, so we're <laughs> really, really excited um, about Pastor Tony, our youth pastor, who um, we laid hands on him, and he had lots of family support, and many of you all came out, and I appreciate you all being here. He appreciates you all being here. Love Tiffany, appreciate you heard him. Love y'all. Um, Tiffany, appreciate you guys being here. And make sure that you're keeping his household in your prayers now just as well as you do as my household and the other pastors because we need your prayers. Amen. Um, so what we're, what we're talking about this month is having a soul detox because our bodies, we oftentimes have impurities in our bodies and we'll cleanse our bodies. And we need to also recognize that our soul needs a cleansing as well. And we establish the premise that we are not a body with a soul, but we are a soul with a body. We are not a body with a soul. We are a soul with a body. The soul will live forever. The body will not. So the body is just the vessel. The soul is the eternal part of our being. And if we're going to take care of our bodies and cleanse it to get rid of toxins and impurities and, and things that harm our bodies, then we certainly should also cleanse our souls. Now, last week we did talk about having a restless soul, and almost everyone in here said, yes, that's me. I'm restless, and we, we established that we have to be still in God's presence, and we wait for him, and we listen for him, and we remember his goodness as we're meditating upon who he is, and that's what we've been doing this week, spending those five minutes with him, and it's given us rest. It's given me rest this week. It, it, it's been really, really incredible, and, and it's something I frequently do. However, this week, I intentionally did it every day, same as you guys, because I made the same commitment, and I'm telling you, I'm going to commit for seven more days, and who, who else would commit for seven more days with me and continue this journey because if we can keep committing up to 28 days, we've established a new habit. And if we will constantly spend that five minutes with him every single day, it will change our lives. Now, this week we're going to move into something that I believe affects, again, everybody in here. And that's why we're talking about it because we need to get rid of this burden we have. I, I'm one of those guys, like, when I get home, if I have a gazillion things in my car, I want the kids to come out and help me. And sometimes they don't. If I'm on my bike, they come out and help me because they hear me pull up. But my car is not as loud, you know, it's, it's very quiet. It sounds a lot like Tanner's bike, you know. You can't hear it at all. And, um, love you, brother. And so I, I pull up. I pull up in my car and they don't hear me get home and I don't want to be obnoxious and like honk the horn or nothing to you know make them come out so I just pull up and if they don't come outside then I'm frustrated because I got all this stuff to carry in sometimes you know sometimes it's just my backpack but sometimes it's all sorts of stuff and so then I'm this guy like I'm grabbing everything all right I've got a water bottle and I might have a cup of tea hanging out of my mouth and a backpack I'm throwing on and got all these boxes because you know you can't make more than one trip amen 
I mean, like when you bring the groceries home, you know, you're getting everything that you can all at once. You, I don't know why we feel like we just can't walk four steps back to the car. We got to get load up with everything. We just, we just put such a heavy load on us, and 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 I, I'll just get everything in my car, just getting it all, just getting everything. I can't, can't leave it in there. And and sometimes I'll get it all out, and what will happen is I'll drop something. I'll drop something. Something might get broken. <laughs> yeah, it might get broken. Like the eggs. That's the worst. That's the worst. Yeah, <laughs> that's the worst. And when it gets broken, it's no longer even useful. And it's all because I've taken on so much. I've, I've put so much on me, such a heavy load, such a heavy burden, that something ends up getting damaged in the process. And the truth of the matter is, is that's what's happened in our lives so frequently, is we've got so many burdens and we try to carry such a heavy load that we can't carry it all. And sometimes we just drop things, they get broken and they're damaged, and it's all because we've taken on too much. So today what I want us to learn to do is to get rid of some of that burden. There's someone that can help us with that burden. And I believe many of us have some burdens. You know that studies show that this generation right now, this generation of people that are alive today are some of the most burdened people in the world, especially here in America because we have so many different things. It's a little less, I'm sure, in like Guatemala where life is simple and it's all about relationships. But here in America, we've just got so many things we're trying to juggle and all of these things and so many burdens come upon us that we, we end up kind of having a mild state of depression. And, and that's what the studies reflect is that people nowadays are living with more depression than at any other point in history. And I'm not talking about deep, deep clinical depression requiring medication. I'm talking about depressed because of the things that are upon you that you can't accomplish. The things that you just start feeling hopeless because there's just so much on your plate. You've just got such a heavy load, that sense of hopelessness, afraid I might drop something, and it seems like there's no one to help us carry the load. But there is someone to carry the load, and, and, and we've got we've to find that out. We've got to discover how God can help us carry that load. But I, I want to really address why I believe so many of us are having this mild sense of depression, and it's not that anything major is going wrong. It's just something is not right. You know, there's just something not right. And it leaves us asking, as the psalmist said, and we sang it, I love that song, why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? Why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? And I believe that there are many people today that are just a little bit downcast when we should be the most joyous people alive if we know Jesus. We should be overflowing with joy, and yet our souls are a little bit downcast. And, and I believe the reason why is because, first off, we have, we're heavy with hurts from the past. We're heavy with hurts from the past. Are any of you in here heavy with some hurts from your past? Things that have happened and, and they're, they're heavy upon you and they, they burden you. And, and again, you, you're, you're not in deep clinical depression, but you're just heavy in your heart over it. There's something that took place that that bothers you. In Lamentations, it says, I remember my affliction and my wondering, the bitterness and the gall. I remember them well. I remember my affliction and my wondering, the bitterness and the gall. I remember them well. And then my soul is downcast within me. Some, some hurt from the past creates a burden in the present. Some of you maybe had a job at one point in time that you loved immensely and something happened and you lost the job. Maybe, maybe there was layoffs or maybe you, maybe you took advantage of the time clock and showed up late too often or, or maybe you didn't agree with something your employer said and you took a stand and it was the wrong stand to take and, and, and you're, you're heavy with that and you regret that. For, for me, there was a job that I held one time and I was 17 years old, and, and I'd gotten a job at UPS. And at that point in time, I was still lost in darkness, 
I was still doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. And a certain thing that I was doing, I'd stopped doing long enough to get the job. And then I got the job. And it was a job that was paying at 17 years old back in 1999. It was paying me $14 an hour. And they also informed me when I was hired, they let me know that UPS drivers make, and you may be surprised by this, UPS drivers make about 30 bucks an hour. And so I was like, wow, man, I could have a career here. And I was so excited about the potential of a career making 30 bucks an hour that I, I decided, you know, to, to pick back up what I put down to get the job and to celebrate and began celebrating every day, regularly. And I ended up being called into the office on a random urinalysis. And when I was called into the office, I'll just be very clear, I no longer had the job any longer. Um, I had a lot of regrets for that for so long, especially in, in some of my struggles and the things that I went through. I had a lot of regrets, in it, and I carried that burden. And, like, and I wondered, what if, how different would my life have looked had that not happened, had I maintained that job? Had, had I been able to work through that, what would my life have looked like? Would I have even ended up in legal trouble such as I did? What would my life have looked like? And, and I, had some, I had a heavy heart over that for a long time, asking that, what would have happened? You know, that whole coulda, shoulda, woulda, and, and it bothered me for a long time. Some of you, it's, it's not about a job. Maybe you've had a friend or a family member hurt you, somebody that you love. Somebody that you trusted. Maybe they betrayed you. Maybe it was a spouse. Somebody let you down, and, and it hurt, and you still carry the weight of that, and it's still heavy upon you. And, and again, you're, 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 you're not clinically depressed, but you've got this sense of downcastness within your soul. Maybe you made some bad financial decisions. Spent too much. Got in a bad business deal. And you carried the weight of that with you, and you said, man, I wish I had done things differently, and it bothered you. There was, um, there was one time in my life, a hurt that took place, and a, a man one time told me that he was going to, to do something for me. And, and, and I'm, a, I'm a firm believer on when you, when you say you're going to do something, you do it. And a man told me he was going to do something for me. And um, it was going to be of great benefit to me and, and even people around me in my lives. And for whatever reason, it ended up not happening. And I, I, I forgave him because that's what we do. But there was still that heaviness within me that, that this person didn't do what they told me they were going to do. And I know that that's happened to some of you. Someone has told you they were going to do something. They were going to help you. Tony, how would it have felt? If everybody said, we're going to come help you lay your tile, and, and then nobody showed up, it, it, that would have created some heaviness in your heart. And, and that's, that's what's happened to some of us. People have said something, and it created heaviness, and we were heavy with our burdens from the past. Some of us are heavy with trouble right now in the present. Some of us are heavy right now with trouble in the present. Job 4, 5 said, but he, he said, but now comes trouble to you. Now. Now comes trouble to you. And you are discouraged. It strikes you. And you are dismayed. Now. Right now it comes to you. And it strikes you. And you are discouraged. And you are dismayed. And some of you right now have trouble. Right now in the present. Maybe it's legal trouble. Maybe it's relational problems. Maybe you're struggling in your marriage and, and it's heavy upon you. Maybe you know some layoffs are coming at your job and you're struggling with that, wondering what is going to happen here. Some of you, maybe you're fighting some addictions. And I'm not just talking about chemical substances. I'm talking about all sorts of addictions. We can be addicted to many things. And maybe you're fighting an addiction. Maybe, maybe right now... You have a heavy heart because of the things that you do when you're alone. You're burdened with it. Burdened with it. And your soul is a little bit downcast within you. <laughs> Maybe some of you just feel stuck. 
just feel stuck. Right now, you just feel stuck. You feel like this is not where you thought you would be at this point in life. Just kind of heavy upon you. Others are heavy with anxiety. This is your third point, heavy with anxiety. That, that, that's, a, that's a code word there, anxiety, man. That, that, that's a trigger word. That's what I meant, anxiety. Heavy with anxiety about the future. Many are heavy and overloaded and overwhelmed and burdened because we're heavy with anxiety about the future. In Mark chapter 14, verse 33 through 34, it says, Jesus began to, de- deep- Jesus began to be deeply distressed and troubled. And he says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. I want to give you a little context of this. Jesus knew from the very beginning, from the very, very beginning, because Jesus is the word of God and through the word all things were created. And from the very beginning, he knew what was going to happen. He, there was never a point where he was surprised by any of it. When they arrested him, he wasn't like, oh, man, I didn't think this was going to happen. He knew it in the very, very beginning. As the Ancient of Days, he knew. And yet, as the day approached, as the day approached where Jesus would be arrested and beaten and crucified and then die the death that we deserve as sinners that have fallen away from God and our relationship with God has been broken, he died that death that we deserve as that day approached. He began, he began to be deeply disturbed. Why do you suppose he was disturbed? Probably because those whips that would have had hooks and glass and things intertwined in them that literally peeled the flesh off of his back. To think ahead to that is quite disturbing. And he was disturbed, probably a little anxious at that moment. Did it mean he wasn't going to do it? Of course not. He, he did it. But it still bothered him thinking of, man, this thing is coming down the road, and I'm not really excited about that. I'm a little bit anxious about that. And I know that in some of our lives, we know there are things that are coming down the road, and we're just a little bit anxious about. We're just a little bit disturbed about Maybe not things as big as what Jesus dealt with, but still things that matter right now to us in our lives. Something that strikes me when I, when I talk to people at funerals and things, someone, I, I, I'll ask people how they're doing, and they'll say, well, you know, I, I guess that um, I'm better than, you know, the, the, the mother or the, the daughter or better than the brother because I just kind of casually knew them, but... You know, it hurts, but I'm not dealing with it on the same level as them and and trying to compare the hurt. The fact of the matter is, is if you hurt, you hurt. And if if, if it's painful to you, it's painful to you. And if there's things that you're anxious about in the future, they might not be a beating and a flogging and being crucified, but it still has you a little bit disturbed and a little bit anxious. And and that can be so many things. Some of you right now, you're thinking in your mind of the things that you know that are coming up that you're worried about. Things that I don't even have a clue that you're worried about. But you know and God knows. And those, those things, they, they come up. Some of you, I know, some of you, I know, I'm going to, some of you, I know, are just sometimes afraid. We just can't get it all done. And that, that's one that gets me sometimes, that, that there's so many things to do. I just get afraid I can't get it all done. And, and I know that that can leave us at times anxious about the future. Some of you, man, your credit card statement is whack, all right? And not just your credit card statement, but also your car payment for the car that you really liked the way that it looked, but you didn't tally in the, the cost or the house that is exceptionally larger than what you could have afforded with a mortgage payment way higher than you can manage, and you're worried about the future and your debt, and am I going to have to go bankrupt? Are they going to come get my car tomorrow? Am I going to come home and my car is gone? What's, what, what's going to happen with this credit card debt? Will I be paying this off 
Right now, I'm 26. Will I be paying this off until I'm 72? And it's got you anxious about the future, and that's a, that's a burden. And, and I believe that all of us in this room, in some shape, form, or fashion, whether it's from our past, in the present, or thinking about the future, we're burdened, and we have heavy souls because of it. But here's the thing. In that verse in Psalm, the psalmist, he says, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. He's not, he's not saying that I cannot beat this. He's wondering. He's asking. He's not complaining. I'm so downcast, oh, my soul. He's making a bold stance here. He's saying, why are you so downcast? Oh, my soul. And remember last week how I told us that sometimes we have to just tell, like, like we tell our kids, sit down and be still? Sometimes we have to tell our soul, sit down and be still? Sometimes we have to tell our soul, why are you so downcast? Put your hope in him, my Savior and my God. Don't be downcast. Put your hope in him. So how do we do that? How can we put our hope in him. First off, you just got to tell your soul to remember God's faithfulness. Remember God's faithfulness in the past. Remember God's faithfulness in the past. Lamentations, he said, I remember my affliction and my wondering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them and my soul is downcast within me. And yet, yet, this, this I call to mind. And therefore, what's it say? Therefore what? Therefore I have hope. Yet I call this to mind. Therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. They're new every morning. He said, I remembered these things and it took me down. And yet, I remembered this thing. And I was encouraged because my God, his mercies are new every single morning. What a beautiful, beautiful thing that is. And that's what we have to do. We have to remember God's faithfulness in our past. We have to remember his faithfulness in our past. The fact that we were broken and, and we didn't have hope. And now if we know Jesus, we do have hope. We have hope because Jesus gave his life for us. We have hope because Jesus is hope. We have hope and a promise for a future. We have hope. Remember his faithfulness in the past. Tony, we were talking about last night, man. I mean, Tony and I, it, it's crazy. Who would have dreamed? They, they sang a song at his ordination, and they sang the amazing grace and that goes into my chains are gone, I've been set free. And we address the fact that when Tony and I met, while we were free on the inside, our souls had been set free. We were not free. We were enslaved. We were, we were behind the razor wire. And we met. And yet, even through that, still to that, we, we lost touch with each other for years. And then, and then God put us back in each other's path. And, and I'm a lead pastor of a church, and he's a youth leader at another church, and God has been so faithful to us, even though we didn't deserve it because we chose to be faithful to him, and God delivered us completely from the pits of despair. God brought us through that. He was faithful to us. Man, some of you I know have lost children in here, and that's the most painful thing you can ever experience. It is so hard to bury your own child. It is brutal. And it's anguish. Complete agony. I would almost say excruciating, but because I know that the word excruciating comes from the word crucifixion, I dare not compare it to what Jesus went through on the cross. But still, it's excruciating. The, 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 just the tear it rips into you. And yet through it all, through it all, my eyes were on him. 
through it all, through it all, it was well. Because I put my hope in him, my savior and my king. And I remembered the verse that carried me for so long. We know that in all things, even the death of my son, yes, Derek, in all things, God is working for the good of those that love him who have been called according to his good purpose. And, and I didn't understand, but God brought me through. He carried me. He literally like put me on his shoulders and said, come on, boy, I got you. Because I couldn't, man. I wanted to give up. To see my wife. Last night, someone asked on Facebook, they asked, you know, name one movie that every person should see in their life. And I, I mean, there's one movie. It's not my favorite movie. My favorite movie is Legends of the Fall. I know, it's weird, whatever. But, <laughs> but the movie I would say that every person on earth should see, first and foremost, is The Passion of the Christ, but secondly, Courageous. Because Courageous is a call to men to rise up and be godly men. And if we have godly men, godly men will lead godly homes and raise godly children who will have a godly legacy and they will change our future into one that is a godly future. So write down Courageous if you haven't seen it. And Tyler, actually, I actually recommend this one, okay? It's all right to watch it. Too many times I've mentioned movies that they've watched and I was like, I didn't tell you to watch it. I was just telling you I knew about it. <laughs> Courageous, I recommend you to watch, okay? I recommend you to watch it. But there's a scene in Courageous, they, I don't want to, there's a scene in Courageous where the husband is looking at his wife and the wife is bawling and she says, why did this happen? And he looks at her and, and he doesn't have any answers whatsoever and he's just hurting and, and I can remember that happening, Amy looking at me and going, why did this happen? And I'm like, I don't know. And man, there was nothing I could do. You know, I, sometimes I, I like to be in control, I'm sorry. <laughs> and there was nothing I could do. And I watched her ball. And I cried. And I hurt. But God, but God, he can do something. And he, he, he held me. He said, no, son, I've got something for you. And you can't see this, but I'm telling you, your son's life will have meaning. And he's not here with you. He's here with me. He's better anyways. He's sitting right now at my lap. He's waiting on you to come home one day. But until that day, you've got some things to do. And it's going to honor him. Now, you just keep staying in step with what I have for you and keep listening to me. And step by step, God delivered me from that hurt. And eventually, my precious Oh my gosh, my precious pumpkin pie, my little Bella, was born. And man, she brought healing to my heart. She didn't replace Logan, but she certainly brought some healing to me. This beautiful child who I know will rise up and be the greatest godly woman of her generation in Jesus' name. And she'll tell you that herself. I never told her that, that she had to do that. She told me that's what she's going to do. That little girl... God was so faithful in giving me such a precious, caring, sweet, obnoxious child. <laughs> she is so incredible. And some of you, I know that Bella has hugged some of you. I know that some of you, um, she, she just talks about, like Eric, man, she talks about Eric all the time, all the time. And she is just so sweet. And God just gave me a picture of what love looks like in her. And I kept saying step by step, and, and we ended up planning a church. We ended up planning a church, man. I mean, here we are, into this thing, after starting in the living room. God was so faithful. We're, even though people said we couldn't do it, Joe, they told us we couldn't. They said we didn't have money, and we didn't have connections. We didn't. But yes, we did. We had a connection. We had Jesus. And that's the connection we needed. And he's got all the money that we need. And, and we might not have had it in our hands, but he had it ready to pour it out upon us to do exactly what we needed to do one step at a time, giving, as you told me the other night, give us an exactly what we need when we need it. And that's what he does. And he, he, he delivered me in the past, and he's delivered you in the past. Think of the prayer that you prayed, and he answered. 
Think about the time when you were just so hurting and you needed him. You said, God, I need a word from you. And then that song came on the radio. That song, man, that one song, you know, that just speaks to you. And, and, it, and it hits you, and you said, thank you, God. I'm going to tell you, I remember his faithfulness in the past. This morning, in fact, I woke up late. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Like, you can wake up late any day, but not on Sunday. Like, you can't do that. That's not okay. And so, like, we're not going to talk about um, speed limits and how fast motorcycles go or nothing like that edit that off the camera because I may or may not have been committing a crime today and, I, and I've got to repent of that, okay? But I was trying to get here, okay? I was just trying to get here and, you know, when I got to Conway, I was like, should I, should I risk Oak Street or should I go ahead and, you know, take my long way, which is my shortcut actually, and, and hit German and run down Stephen Morgan and come up Ingram, you know, because it, it's, it's, it's the light bypass, like the Valonia bypass, it's the light bypass. And I was like, should I take the bypass? And I said, you know what? No, God, I, I know this is crazy, God, but like, if you can just give me every light this morning, I, I know that's impossible. I, I, know, I know that like, healing people is easier than giving us every light in Conway. <laughs> but God, if you would just do this thing this morning because I've got to get there. Okay, I'm not lying. Every single light on Oak Street was green. That's a miracle, man. I mean, y'all live here in this city. That is a flat-out miracle. God was faithful in my past, even though my past was just this morning, and he got me here so I could tell you how to put your heavy burdens on him and remember his faithfulness in your past. Secondly, what we got to do, man, we got to cry out to God right now in the present. Cry out to God right now in the present. Psalm 142 says, I pour out my complaint before him. Before him, I tell him my trouble. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge. You are my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Guys, whatever your trouble is right now in the present, you have to cry out to him. You got to pour it out to him. From the depths of your heavy soul, Give it to him. Yeah. Cry out and say, God, I need you right now. That's what I did this morning. And he responded. It's amazing. Give it to him. Whatever your present affliction is that's burdening you, give it to him and shout it out to him. Listen, my kids, man, I can't even remember how many I have. I got so many of them. <laughs> there's, there's six. Logan counted at home with the Lord, but there's five here. And, you know, Man, when they come to me, when they come to me, Alyssa, uh, my oldest daughter, she, she and I are, are, she's not only my daughter, we're also friends. Now, my role first and foremost with her is her father, okay? And I do not believe in being friends first to your children, okay? That's not biblical. <laughs> biblical is teach them in the ways of the Lord, and sometimes that goes against your children's sinful nature. So you can't just be your friend. You got to be their spiritual authority and lead them, okay? And so first and foremost, I lead her. But secondly, she, she's a friend and we talk to each other. And there is nothing that makes me feel as good when my daughter comes to me and she says, Dad, I need to talk to you about something. Can you, can you give me some guidance here on this? Dad, this is what's going on and I don't, I don't know what to do. Man, when my baby girl comes to me and says that to me, as a father who loves her, that means so much to me because it lets me know she's growing up, but she still needs daddy. And God is our father, and even though we're grown up, sometimes he wants to be reminded that we still need daddy. He wants us to come to him. Listen, even my wild man Deuce, Deuce likes to, he likes to like, he's kind of, He's kind of a stuffer, and I don't want him to be, but he kind of is. He tries to process things on his own and work them out on his own. He, he, he wants to be very independent. Maybe it's the sign of being the, the oldest or something. But Deuce comes to me sometimes. He says, Dad, I've been thinking about this, and it's been bothering me, and I don't really know, and I want to talk to you about this, Dad. And you know what? 
it means just as much as when my little girl does. Men, it's okay to go talk to dad, and we need to cry out to him right now in our present. When something is going on, go and talk to him. Tell him, this is what's going on, God, and it's too much for me to handle. I'm giving it to you. Get me through this because I can't, but I know that you can. Give it to him. Your burdens right now in the present, those burdens you're facing, give them to him. And lastly, man, you got to trust in God's power. Love that word. Dunamai, power for your future. Trust in God's power for your future. Hezekiah, the king of Judah, said this in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 7 through 8. Be strong and courageous. And if you're here today, I want to just tell you right now, the Lord says this so many times in his word. Be strong and courageous. I don't care if you're a part of this church. I don't care if you're a visitor. I don't care if you don't even know why you're here today. Be strong and courageous for your Lord, your God is with you and he will be with you wherever you go. Do not be afraid or discouraged because the king of Syria and the vast army within him for there is a greater power what is that? A what? A what power? A greater power with us than with him. And with him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us. And to what's that say? To fight our battles. The Lord is with us. See, these things in the world that are just flesh, greater is he that is with us and not only with us, but in us. And he is greater than the things we face in this world. And he'll be with us wherever we go. And he promises this. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. So these things you're dealing with about your future, he's got it in control. He's got it. He already knows. He's not surprised about anything. See, he wasn't surprised about the cross. And he's not surprised about what you need and when you need it. He already knows. And while you are still looking at the problem, he already knows the solution. Look to him to get your solution. And he will deliver you. And I'm telling you, this is true. You know, um, like my kids, I'll have that courageous conversation with them because I love them. And uh, that, that, that guy that, that fell through on me, I ended up talking to him at some point. I talked to him. And, and I shared with him that he'd hurt my heart. I, I shared with him that burden from the past that I was carrying that, that it hurt me. And, you know, he, he said, I'm sorry. And forgive me for that. And I was, I was done right there. I have complete healing. I have complete healing. Totally good. And I thought we were through. But see, God knows what we need when we need it. And God has a plan for our future that we don't see. And the man afterwards surprised me. I had no idea and did something that impacts my future, and the future of people around me. Because God is the God of our past, present, and future. And he knows when to release what is needed and when we need it. I'm going to go back to losing Bella really quick. And I'm going to talk about Miss Amy and... Um, even myself, not losing Bella, losing Logan. And um, when, when we were pregnant, not, you know, I wasn't pregnant, but like she's pregnant, I got to deal with that mess too. So like, you know, <laughs> when we was pregnant and I gained weight too, man, I don't know what, and she lost hers, I don't know what happened to me. Taco Bell, Taco Bell, man. Um, I can remember if we didn't feel Bella move, you know, like every six minutes, we were freaking out. We, we were freaking out. Joe, you remember when they put her on bed rest? Ooh. When Amy got put on bed rest with Bella after having lost Logan, man, you want to talk about anxious about the future? 
that was anxious about the future. And it was like, man, God, this can't happen again. And my good friend that I shared with y'all about one of my mentors, Dr. William Tollett, he set me down because I, I went to his office and, and I said, I said, William, it's eating me up, man. It's eating me up. I don't even feel like I'm being effective right now ministering to people because Amy's at home you know, on bed rest with a child. And, you know, we, we lost Logan. And he said, Derek, did God deliver you when you lost Logan? I said, yeah, but right now, and he goes, okay, but did he deliver you when you lost Logan? I said, yes. He said, did he wake you up today? And I said, yeah. He goes, then he's not through with you. I said, okay, what are you getting at? He said, he's not through with you. And didn't he tell us to be strong and courageous, for God is with us wherever we go? I said, yes. He goes, then don't worry about it. He carried you through before. He's got you right now today, and he already knows your future. And whatever it looks like, he's going to take you through that as well. He's got you. Man, I'll never forget that. I will never forget that. Guys, God has so much in store for you. No matter how burdened you are today, he has so much in store for you. Whether you are young, middle-aged, older, he woke you up, and he's got something in store for you. He is not through with you yet. And whatever it is, this is what we do know. It is good. Because he is with us, he is for us, and he is good. Trust his power in your future because it's been his power that's got you to where you are. Don't give up. Don't give up. Some of you may be ready to give up. Don't give up. Trust God's power for your future. And as I think it was Pastor Nate that taught this point the week I was gone, but it may have been Pastor Joe and it may have been Pastor Tyler. I can't remember. I can't remember the point I taught three weeks ago, all right? But one of you taught, Joe, it was you, taught them that he is going to do immeasurably more than anything we ask or imagine. And God is going to do immeasurably more than anything you can ask or imagine in your future if you will put your burdens on him today. And like we talked about all last month, just one step at a time, let him keep delivering you over and over and over. Why are you so downcast, oh my soul? I will praise you, my Savior and my King. I give it to you, and I trust you. And because I trust you, I'm actually fired up because of what you got for me. I'm not downcast. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to storm hell with the squirt gun, wearing a gasoline underwear, <laughs> and no sunscreen, because I know you got me. I'm ready. Let's do it. Amen? Amen? If you'll bow your heads for me and close your eyes right now, everybody, I know you have burdens. I, I know you. we all have burdens. But if today God is ministering to your heart, and, and, and maybe your burden has been something from your past and you've carried a heavy load, maybe it's something right now in your present that's weighing you down, or maybe it's those anxieties about your future, but you trust God and you, you can remember his goodness. You can remember that he's delivered you. And you know that he's right now here with you. And you trust his power for your future. And you want me to pray over you where you are. Let me see your hands right now. Praise God for the people that trust you. Praise God. Lord, I lift them up to you right now. God, you see your children. And just like when my own kids come to me and they say, I need to talk to you, Dad. I need you. Right now, we're coming before you saying, we need to talk to you. We need you. Because this world is not easy. There are things that are out of our control. And, and, and Lord, they're heavy upon us. Sometimes the load is too much and we even drop things and break them. Things get damaged. But God, we know no load is too heavy for you. 
So we put it on you. We put our burdens on you. We give them to you. And God, we pray. We pray that you would begin moving on our behalf. God, in fact, I know you're not going to begin. You've already been moving on our behalf. And Lord, I pray that you would open every pathway to lead us on the best pathway for our lives as you've promised according to your word and as you promised the children of Israel, Israel Lord, when they, were, when they were in captivity. You promised them. You said you know the plans you have for them. Plans for a hope and a future. And I pray that we would proclaim that promise and speak it over ourselves today that you have a plan for us plans for a hope and a future and we trust you with it because you are our hope you are our future and we long to be with you one day but until that day comes Lord God is step by step today to be effective in doing your work and being a light in a dark world in Jesus name Amen You know in this room here there may be someone today came in and you, you feel like you have no hope, your present is burdened, and you don't even know about your future because you've never been introduced to the one that gives you hope. You've never been introduced to Jesus Christ, and, and you heard me talking about how he created all things, and you heard me talking about how we were separated from God because of our sin, and you heard me mention how he died for our sin. But see, that's not where the story ended. It's not a story. It's history. It's truth. And that's not where history stopped. History's divided by his death. But the truth of the matter is, is Jesus did not stay dead. The grave could not contain him. See, the power that we talked about, our God being with us and in us, that power, that spirit raised Jesus from the dead, showing that God has power over all things, even death, even stoplights. He has power over all things. He is in control, and there is nothing he cannot do. And he promised us that through our faith and submission to Jesus Christ as Lord, that we would have eternal life, that we would have the Holy Spirit within us to give us power and to guide us, and that our eternal life would be forever with God in heaven. Man, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. And if you're hearing that today, and you've never surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're asking, what, what must I do? Because I, I want hope for my future. Derek, I want to be able to tell a story like you have where God delivered you, and now to see what you're doing and how he uses you, I want God to use me, but I don't know what to do. The Bible says, confess with your mouths and believe in your hearts that Jesus is Lord you will be saved. If you believe what you've just heard, if you believe Jesus died for you, if you, if you believe he rose from the grave, and that last part of him being Lord, he ascended to heaven, where today he rules as Lord and King, and one day he's coming back for us, and if something within you is speaking within you, and you believe that, and right now you want to confess that he is Lord, and you want to ask him for forgiveness of your sins, you can do that right now you will be saved, not because of me, but because of what he's done. So if you'll bow your heads one more time for me and close your eyes, if there's anybody in this room that has never asked forgiveness of your sin, and today you would confess because you've heard and you believe, you would confess that Jesus is Lord and you would surrender your life to him with nobody looking around, just raise your hand right now for me. Just raise your hand. If it's you today, let me see your hand. Praise God. Lord, thank you for them. Thank you for them all. And Lord, we just love you and we thank you for the forgiveness we have in you. And we thank you for our promise for a future. Now, as I call the ushers forward, um, we're going to do a couple things here. We are, um, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. It explains up on the screen, or it usually explains up on the screen, Marianne. It usually explains up on the screen why we give. I'm sure it's about to explain why we give. But we give because God said so. And he's Lord. He's Lord. So we give because he said so. And, and trusting God with our finances is a very practical way of showing, God, I trust you in all things. I 
trust you because of you've delivered me from my past. I know you're with me right now in my present. And even though I need this money tomorrow, I trust your power in my future. And since I trust your power in my future, I will obey you right now in my present. So that's why we give. Now, um, as some of you are preparing your tithes and offerings, if you're new here today, you have connection cards in the backs of your chairs. Fill out a connection card as the ushers pass the baskets. Drop it in there. Or you can go outside this door right here on the right and then go in the first door on your left up the step. Go to our connections room. We want to get to know you. We're, we're glad you're here. I, I mean, I see quite a few actual new faces here today and we want to know you because we're a family and we love you and, and we want to be a part of your lives and we want, we want to equip you for God's best for your future. So fill out that connection card so we can be in contact. Uh, there's a few events coming up Ashley's going to talk to you about after we pray over the tithes and offerings. So um, put those connection cards in the basket or take them to the connection room. But let's, let's pray over our tithes and offerings. And remember, you can also give online or text to give. But Lord Jesus, thank you. I trust you and I thank you. You bless me so much. And I pray that my obedience and returning to you what is yours, even the little bit that's above, God, I, I just I pray that you would be blessed my, by my obedience. And furthermore, God, because I know you don't need the money. You want my obedience, but you don't need the money. I pray that you would use the money to impact your kingdom and so that your church could be effective in her ministry of making you known in this hurting world and developing sold-out followers of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.